Hello guys, Toby here. Today I'm going to review the 55 inch Samsung Frame TV. Let's get started. The television features 4K resolution, HDR and a refresh rate of 120Hz. The peak brightness is about 550 nits. The TV uses the so-called QLED technology, which among other things delivers an extremely low input lag. The screen comes with the Samsung One Connect box, offers a HDMI 2.1 port and also FreeSync support. The operating system is Tizen OS. The so-called no-gap wall mount is also included. The TV comes in following size options 75 inch, 65 inch, 55 inch, 50 inch, 43 inch and 32 inch. Just be aware, only the screens bigger than 50 inch offer 120Hz. The 32 inch model is only 1080p. So all my following statements should be valid for the 55 inch, the 65 inch and the 75 inch model. Depending on the time you are watching this video, the prices could already have changed quite a lot. Links to the television are in the video description, so you can check for yourself. If you're thinking about buying a Samsung Frame TV, then you're probably doing it for aesthetic reasons. At least that's what I did. I wanted a television that blends in with the living room and doesn't stand out. The Samsung Frame series fits in with these wishes for several reasons. First of all, the television comes with a so-called no-gap wall mount, which lets you mount the television really close to the wall. If you have a perfectly straight wall, then the no-gap claim actually delivers. The wall in my apartments are about 100 years old, but even here the television sits really flat. The second feature that lets the television blend in way better is the included One Connect box. There's just one tiny cable that needs to be connected to the television. This small optical cable powers the television and carries all HDMI, USB, audio and network connections. By using some nice cable management, it's quite easy to make this cable almost invisible. If you have drywall, it would be also very easy to just route the cable inside the wall. And last but not least, this television offers the so-called art mode. Here the television displays professional artworks from famous painters and photographers. You can select what kind of border you want as well, for an even better immersion. Furthermore, the television adjusts the brightness regarding to the brightness of the room. Just be aware, there's only a very limited selection of pictures available for free. But you can sign up for a monthly subscription. You also can just upload your own pictures if you want to. And of course, that's free of charge. Overall, the experience in my opinion is really great. Especially when art mode is activated, the television just blends way better into the living room than any other television I've ever seen with my own eyes. You probably couldn't fool everyone by saying that they are looking at an ordinary artwork, but I would say it comes pretty close. And having all the cables and ports packed away is a huge plus for me. You also can buy additional frames for your frame if you want to customize it. These frames clip to the television via magnets. I'm going to be honest here, you don't get the best image quality for the price. Don't get me wrong, the frame offers a beautiful 4K screen. The contrast ratio is very high, the colors are vivid, but still very accurate. To be precise, the contrast ratio is about 8000 to 1, which is just an awesome result. That also means that the black levels are really black. The viewing angles, however, are just okay. Thanks to the high brightness of about 550 nits, glare is not that much of an issue, even if your room is quite bright. But still, for that much money, you would get a higher rated model from Samsung or other brands. You don't only pay extra for the beautiful looking design, but also for the included one connect box and the no gap wall mount. For example, this television does not offer any local dimming, so the HDR experience is not as good as it could be for the price. You simply have to ask yourself how much the design is worth to you. Thanks to the included filmmaker mode, there's also not really the need to dial in custom settings for the picture quality. This mode just offers a really good movie watching experience straight out of the box. The Samsung One Connect box offers a decent amount of ports. You get 4 HDMI ports, one of which is HDMI 2.1. Furthermore, it offers 2 USB ports, an Ethernet port, digital audio out, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi and a television tuner. The HDMI 3 port supports the new eARC protocol. For some reason, the USB ports only offer 2.0 speeds. 
The HDMI 2.1 board is listed as supporting 4K at 120Hz at 10 bit with a 4244 chroma subsampling. Anyone who is buying a next gen console will take advantage of that port. As I have already mentioned in the intro, QLED monitors from Samsung are famous for the low input lag. I don't own any precise measurement tools to measure the input lag, so I'm referring to the great and detailed review of ratings.com. I'm gonna link to their test in the video description. There they mentioned that the input lag is amazing, it's very low in game mode or PC mode. Even while using a 10-bit HDR signal, the input lag is still very low. Thanks to the low input lag, FreeSync support, 120Hz panel and HDMI 2.1, this television is just awesome in terms of gaming. It doesn't matter if you use a PC, a next-gen console or even an older model, you will have an awesome time. Over the last couple of years, I've got to experience a lot of different TV operating systems, but I've never used Tizen OS before. Compared to my experiences with Android TV or my Fire TV stick, this operating system feels really snappy. I always felt that Android TV starts to get laggy over time. So far I haven't had any issues with Tizen OS. It's really easy to use and even people that are not tech savvy will find everything they need quite fast. Tizen OS also comes with its own app store and there you will find all your typical stuff like Netflix, Disney+, Plus, Plex and so on. The store doesn't offer as many apps as the Android TV store. I got all the apps I needed though, like Steam Link and even the app of my local Austrian TV broadcaster. Your mileage may vary though, so just leave a comment if you want to know if a certain app is available. The remote feels really nice. It's really easy to use because it doesn't have that many buttons. There are four cursor buttons and a big center button in the middle. Below that you will find a volume rocker which also functions as a mute button and an additional channel rocker. There's one dedicated button for voice commands which you can use if you are into that sort of thing. There is also a dedicated Netflix, Amazon Prime and a Rakuten TV button. I could imagine that depending on the region these buttons could be different. I think that a few extra buttons would have been nice. I don't understand that there is no dedicated fast forward or backwards button. It doesn't feel that intuitive for me to do that with the cursor buttons. But this is just my personal opinion. I also would prefer to have a menu button that always shows up the context menu in a certain situation. Overall the remote is really nice and the interface is really easy to use. The sound quality of the built-in speakers is really decent. That's probably due to the fact that the television is a little bit thicker than other modern televisions. The speakers can get quite loud, the highs sound clear, but of course the television lacks in terms of bass. If you're not an audiophile person, you probably are just fine with the built-in speakers. But even a generic soundbar will enhance your listening experience. Here's a short comparison between my Q60T plus the rear speakers and the built-in speakers. Design first, everything else second, would be a fitting headline for this television. It's just so obvious that Samsung put a lot of thought into designing a nice looking television. It's not just the look of the hardware, but also the software. Art mode helps the television to blend in way more than I would have expected. Luckily, the picture quality doesn't fall short either. You still get an amazing contrast ratio, the brightness levels are also impressive. The HDI experience is, compared to the price, by far not the best that you could get. But other than that, I've never thought that I'm missing out on anything. Tizen OS is snappy and all the apps that I need are available in the store and work flawlessly. The One Connect box makes cable management so easy and tidy. In the end, you need to decide for yourself how important design is for you and if you want to pay a little bit extra for that. If you have any questions regarding this television, just hit me up and leave a comment. I hope you enjoyed this little review. I wish you all the best. Bye and servus.